YouTube gang. Oh man. What's good y'all, it's Scott Ho Ho here and today I'm gonna be sharing with you six things I wish I knew before I started lifting. I know there's a concept that a lot of fitness creators do so I just wanted to give my two cents and my perspective on things that I would share with my younger self. Now, these aren't just tips on how to work out properly but they're also tips on how to frame fitness in a more holistic and healthy way. But in addition to that, I'm also gonna be taking you guys through a shoulders and arm workout today so I hope you guys enjoy. So feel free to save the video for your next arm day and get started with the video. All right, with that, the first thing that I wish that I knew sooner was the importance of protein. And you probably hear it all the time, hit your protein goals, make sure you get enough protein. But the only reason why you hear it so much is because it's true. Like when I was in high school during basketball season, I would straight up lose 20 pounds of muscle in like three months because I was playing basketball for like two plus hours a day. And I wasn't maintaining adequate amounts of protein or calories overall. So literally after every basketball season, I would work myself back up to where I was, which if I had to do again, I would just be more strict on my protein and caloric intake overall. But now this bears the question, how much protein should you actually take? And the answer to this is, it depends. If you're in a maintenance or a bulking phase, for example, I would recommend getting around one gram of protein per lean pound of body weight. But if you're cutting, you can actually increase that to around 1.2 grams of protein per lean pound of body weight because you essentially wanna be preserving and maintaining as much muscle mass as possible on a cut. All this to say, eat your damn protein. It's super important, and with that, Let's pick a protein that we kind of want to make today. We got oolong milk tea, we got winter melon, we got matcha, we got Vietnamese coffee. All right, let's make some oolong. Can you guys even see it? Here, let's zoom up a little bit. Yeah, bro, boba tea protein, all flavors, fire. You guys want to try these flavors too, you can use my code HOHO10 for 10% off your next order. Gambe. Cheers, man. I'm telling you, I only partner with them because I actually enjoy their shit. Like they are so good at making healthy alternatives to the flavors that they put out. You just gotta try some, man. You gotta try it for yourself. But okay, let's finish this protein shake and let's get into today's workout. I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, we're at the gym, working out shoulders and arms today, and let's just get a quick warm up in to make sure our body's warm and stuff. All right, first exercise of the day, we got dumbbell shoulder press. We're gonna go for high reps because my apartment gym only has up to 50 dumbbells. So, let's get it. to the second thing I wish I learned before I started lifting, that is to start as young as possible, man. This is targeted to all the young ones watching. If you are as young as eight years old, it's completely safe to start strength training, so long as you're doing it with proper guidance and you're doing it safely. I think there's this big myth that if you start training at a young age, it's gonna stunt your growth, but in my opinion, I think starting as early as possible is only gonna serve you well in the long run. Personally speaking, working out at a young age is really what's allowed me to develop the healthy habits that I have now, and I prioritize health at such a young age that to me, it's now like second nature. I couldn't really imagine life any other way. And I feel like that's the whole goal of fitness in the first place, like figuring out what works for you, making it work for you, and doing it for the rest of your life. Oh, and not to mention, I'm six foot, I'm the tallest in my family, so anecdotally speaking, I wouldn't attribute working out to stunning growth. So if you're like 12 years old watching this right now, I would recommend get started right away with someone that can guide you in the right direction and with someone that knows what they're doing. All right, and with that, let's get into our next workout. Lateral raises, baby, let's get it. All right, up next, we got lateral raises. Second exercise of today, we're gonna do three sets. To be honest, even though these are more optimal, I actually like dumbbell lateral raises more. A perfect example of something that I do that is less optimal, but I think it works better for me. But for this video, we're doing cables. Let's get it, baby. And that 
brings me to the third thing that I wish I knew when I started lifting is how to train to failure. When I first started lifting, I was kind of blindly doing things and I definitely wasn't training at the intensity that I should have been training at. Now, I'm not saying that you should jump head first and train to failure on every exercise the first time you start. It's totally okay to ease into new exercises and make sure that your form and your execution is on point before you start to train to failure. But once you get that down, you need to learn how to push yourself and train with intensity to a point where you're training to or close to failure. But it makes sense, right? Like your muscles aren't gonna grow or get stronger if, if you don't give it the stimulus to do so, right? Like if you start to put your body and your muscles through enough stress, then your body actually has something to adapt to. It has an incentive to be stronger for the next time that you perform. That's the third thing, train to failure, learn how to train with intensity. Let's get on with the workout. All right, so up next, we got some heavy bicep dumbbell curls. I'm gonna perform these seated, trying to make sure that I use as little momentum as possible. Just like the last tip, make sure you're training to failure, baby. Let's get it. My mind run deep in my thoughts when I didn't have it. Sleeping on the floor, wishing it was a mattress. Now I'm in Hollywood with actors and actress. Where everybody bougie, latest trends and fashions. I'd rather keep it a buck, a hundred if you ask me. I was trying to pay the bills just like last week. I was trying to sell a deal just like last week. Trying to run plays and run it up like the math leaks. It's in my DNA to have hope and make a way. Good energy will hit that MJ fade away. Miss me with the hate and now, nah, bruh, not today. Stayed in my lane. Dick all right, and that brings me to my fourth point that I wish I knew when I started working out, and that is genetics matter. Not just a little bit, genetics matter a lot. Now this is not to say that you should blame genetics when you're not making progress, but before being so hard on yourself, just know that the game that you're playing may be different than the person next to you. It's pretty similar to school, right? Some students only have to study one hour and can ace a test, whereas another student will study for days, weeks, and still get a worse grade. In this same regard, everybody will have their own unique body type, body fat percentage set point, metabolism, muscle insertions, how their body reacts to stimulus, the list goes on. So you, even doing the same workout as your favorite fitness influencer or someone that has your ideal physique, may not get you the same results. It wasn't until I accepted it, started focusing on my own journey, that I really started to see my progress, where I wanted to be, and take my wins at face value. So just make sure that you know the cards that you're dealt and you play them the best that you can. And with that, let's get into our next bicep exercise. Let's get it. All right, next exercise, we've got hammer curls. We're doing three sets. Keep your elbows tucked, hard contraction at the top, slow eccentric. Let's get it. That brings me to the next thing I wish I knew sooner in my fitness journey, and that is the importance of nutrition. A lot of people get hung up on how many times they should be going a week, what split is best for them, how much cardio they should be doing, and while all that stuff is super important, I would say that's only half the battle for most people. I would say a lot of the times, the place that people struggle with the most is what they're doing in the kitchen. I think the best way to find out what works for you in terms of nutrition is actually build out a meal plan that aligns with your fitness goal. Over time, you can start to build out that meal plan and be a little bit more flexible with the things that you include in it. And eventually you'll find foods and meals that align to your fitness goals that you enjoy and that works for you. And if you're new to this channel, I'm a full-time fitness coach. I've helped 50 plus clients already in achieving their fitness goals by creating their custom workouts, nutrition plan, and making sure that we're checking in weekly to keep them accountable towards their goals. I'd recommend checking out my website, scotthopefitness.com, and fill out an application if this is something that you're interested in. All right, sorry for the shameless plug. Up next, we got triceps. Let's get it. All right, for this next exercise, we got tricep pushdowns. We're gonna do them unilaterally, meaning one arm at a time. Make sure to keep your elbows tucked, full range of motion. This is gonna be working the lateral head of your tricep. So this thing right here, again, as always, train hard. Let's get it. Sixth and final thing that I wish I knew when I started lifting 
and that is managing your expectations. I think with the rise of social media, it skews people's perception of what good and natural progress is. Like you'll see some crazy physiques online that are referred to as average. And it's because you'll see these like four year transformations truncated into like a 10 second reel. So just remember that everything you see online is biased to show you the strongest, biggest, most genetically gifted, craziest transformations and it just isn't representative of the average person. All this to say, manage your expectations and give yourself a fair timeline to achieve your goals. All right, last exercise of the day, baby. We got tricep extensions. As always, control the extension portion of the movement. Keep your elbows tucked in. And what was that second tip again? Oh yeah, train to failure, baby. y'all that's a wrap for today's workout i hope you enjoyed it and i hope that these tips helped out a little bit especially for the people just getting into their fitness journey it's cool that i got to create my own rendition of this things that i wish i knew before i started lifting but i appreciate all of you guys i appreciate all the love thank you if you made it this far in the video and with that i'll see you guys at the next one peace